now again, another wonderful opportunity to chat to somebody on our Zoom with whom. Uh, we're in the presence of uh, Mr. Alan Warren at Little. How are you, Alan? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, how are you doing? You know, been stuck in this room for the last <laughs> few weeks just talking to people. It's great. Um, you look, yeah. you look like a racing driver sat there with all them sponsorships behind you. Guys. Well, you? we value the support, my friend. Without it, the <laughs> daily sheet can't, can't do its work without all these lovely people. <laughs> Including this one. Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's all good to be a part of it, it really is. It's almost like I've got myself a little studio here, like, you know, but anyway, but it is actually my spare room for anybody who's interested. Um, so Alan, lockdown. Um, yeah. We're just catching up with a few folks and having a bit of a chat um, from different areas of the dance world. Um, very poignant for you. I don't think you're gonna forget lockdown in 2020. No, I'm not, I'm not, no. It was my birthday and, uh, Lots of things planned, probably like everybody else, and then all of a sudden the lockdown happened. And, and uh, if we look back to when it happened, everything was shut. Yeah. You know, you couldn't, couldn't get anything. Any of my wife was panicking; she couldn't get me a card or a present. Um, my friends were coming up from down south, obviously they couldn't do that anymore. Uh, so we ended up sitting in the garden with two bottles of beer because that's all we had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll make up for it later on. You know, obviously there's more important things to do, and um, it's like I say. We've used the word unprecedented times so often, but it's been an incredible experience, really. Um, you know, we, good and bad for lots of different people, uh, but an experience we certainly won't forget, and hopefully we'll get out of it sooner rather than later. It's interesting how you 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 term it as like a different experience, because what people probably don't realise is you're still working every day. We're all working every day behind the scenes in whatever roles. Um, a lot of people will see you on the TV. Well, obviously that's not happening at the moment, but your role in within the PDPA, I would imagine you haven't stopped from day one. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously we're using different outlets like we're using this one here. We yeah. use Skype a lot with the PDPA. Um, you know, from the start, it, you know, obviously very busy at the early part of this because we didn't know how long it was going to last. Yeah. Uh, things, things changed on a daily basis uh, at the early stages. Uh, so we had to put a big plan in place. Mainly, the, we did it in three folds, really. First of all, we wanted to make sure that all our members uh, had all the right information, correct information, and updated information. So it was all about information initially. Yeah. You know, tournaments cancelled, making sure that you've cancelled flights and, and uh, travel and hotels and stuff like that. Uh, secondly, we wanted to make sure we gave all our members emotional and financial support. Um, emotional stance to itself, you know, we put all our avenues open, all our partners are available, and we were just reiterating that to all our members that these are still available and you can use them now during lockdown, uh, which people may want to use more. And obviously, the financial thing was a big thing for us. We had to plan that um, emergency fund initially, where every tour card all could have a thousand pounds, so that covered um, April. Uh, and then we did a hardship fund for May and June. We worked it on a three-month basis because we didn't know what was going to happen in July or August, and we still don't really. Yeah. Uh, so we covered our members, our tour guide holders, in terms of finances as well. And then obviously the third part is the planning, uh, you know, back to work. When's it going to happen? Uh, we still don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, lots of things to go through, and people will be watching the news all the time with stuff like football. Uh, and, and other sports, uh, you know, they're, they're starting to do behind closed doors. Snooker starts next week. Yes. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see um, uh, how that's done. Uh, not just what you see on camera, uh, on TV, but, you know, behind the scenes, how, how it's going to be run. Because the most important thing of all is the health. It's got to be the health issues and uh, make sure the guidelines and the government advice is followed. The, um, for those that are watching this that may be um, quite young in the game or maybe, you know, thinking about making a move to play, etc., at this point that this sort of thing happens, there's probably, because when people look at you or see on the TV and see all the top games on, on ITV or Sky, whatever it is, those top players are, are sort of earning a fair bit of what, you know, but there's hundreds yeah. of others that maybe they've just made the choice to become a pro perhaps it's, it, this year, you know, and they've given up a that's, job, well, that, you know. Yeah, that last, point, that last point you said there, a lot of uh, new tour card holders, um, you know, because of the lucrative money in the game, uh, packed in work to give yeah. themselves the, the best opportunity for two years of earning that tour card to, you know, make their name in the game and make, make some money. And then all of a sudden, three months into the season, this well, less than three months, this happens. Um, so we've made sure that we've, one good thing is we've made contact with every player uh, via any one of our outlets. 
uh, all our uh, communication outlets were on the full. Um, we just started the coffee mornings recently and they've gone down really well uh, because there's four or five of us not just talking about these issues. Where's my invite? I love coffee. It's in the post. <laughs> not a member, that's what. <laughs> and it's gone down really well uh, because apart from talking about the obvious about uh, this virus, what's happening, uh, PDPA, PDC tournaments, we're having a general discussion, just seeing how people are, you know, because you want to make sure everybody's okay. Yeah, want to make sure everybody's all right. Um, and they're, they're aware that everything's available for them if they need it. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. Um, you really do look after your, your, your fellow players there. Um, so you're at home. Um, how on earth is everybody coping with you being at home all the time? Because most of the time, you're either on a train, on a plane, in Wigan, I don't know, on telly. You, you must be, have you been asked to do a lot of things like DIY? <laughs> <laughs> Lo loads of it yeah incredibly uh, especially with the weather it's been amazing that uh, can you imagine this if it was during the winter it'd have been a nightmare for a lot well, of people just, just before this we had all them floods didn't we i oh, know crazy yeah crazy um i was down in um well two weekends running i was down in the minehead area one for the tournament and one for did the caving experience down at uh, wookie hall yes so that was quite cool. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been crazy, really. It, it, it's difficult to sort of put a finger on it. I mean, obviously, we've been really busy in terms of, you know, we're working from home, so you've got to have a plan. Yeah. Um, you've still got to work. You've still got lots of uh, people to represent and discuss things. We have a PDPA meeting three or four times a week on Skype for a couple of hours. Um, I speak to the PDC on a daily basis, uh, the DRA, all our partners. Mm. Uh, trying to get as much information as we can, making and making this an opportunity as well as obviously yes, it's not what we want, but make it into an opportunity. I mean, loads of we've seen on TV people doing strange things, but that's just taking up the time. But um, you know, people standing in front of boards with loads of placards at the back and stuff like that. You know, oh sorry, <laughs> thanks. But, uh, but it is, it is, you've got to look at it as an opportunity in terms of what else can you do. You know, um, there's, there's my phone going. That's fine. It's fine. Um, well, this and, uh, the whole point is just to have a chat, and and, and we because yeah. we're working all the time on our projects, etc. And then if you got a bit of spare time, it look sort of lunch hour now, isn't it really? Just to have a yeah. quick catch up, you know. That's right. Um, I mean, Darth is in a good position in terms of uh, a lot of other sports. Well, you know, you've done your, your JDC virtual, which just seems to have gone down really well. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the PDC did the home tour, which is now starting in the second phase uh, yes, uh, last night. That's right, yeah. Um, so we're in a yeah we're in a unique position that um, those things could be done. So it gave the the players a bit more opportunity to maybe be a bit more positive and practice and play in these things. Mm. Um, you know, some players I've spoken to haven't picked up a dart since the lockdown, which is a strange thing because they've not been motivated to do. Um, you know, they maybe have to get the skates on at some point um, yeah. you know, because you never know how. How far away we are, we just don't know yet. That's right. Our chairman Steve Brown, he he's you know he's he's picked him up, had a go on the on the Unibet tour thing, you know, with the PDC. Um, but again, it, it it is quite difficult. He's, he's admitted it's difficult to get motivated when you're at home because you get a lot of distractions, and and, he, and you've yeah. got to sort of like put yourself at work. So you know, get up at seven, eight, whatever you do, work between nine and so, and try and try and not mix the two. It's but it's it's awkward at home, isn't it? You know, the doorbell goes or the dog barks. Talking of which, how are the dogs? If my two dogs bark, you'll hear it. They're, they're actually oh, yes. in, the, oh, they're in the kitchen at the moment. I mean, they're, they're both nine and a half stone and they're still growing. The yes, big that's... dogs. But, uh, they they're awesome. loving it because I'm home every day. I mean, I've been traveling traveling all around the world for 35 years and, and still probably doing it. So it's uh, a strange one for me. I, I enjoy it mostly, but um, obviously we want to get back to normality. But I'm yeah. kind of enjoying it in terms of not doing all the travel. But um, obviously it's affecting everybody in a different way you know yeah yeah so my wife, my, wife, my, wife, my, wife, my wife works for the nhs as well so she's out monday to friday on shifts yes uh, i've got my son home from university as well right so. but you used to work for the nhs didn't you i did yeah 20 25 years i was a nurse yeah in uh, from when i was 16 um sort of the later stages of it i was only part-time because obviously i was playing darts a lot and traveling yeah but, uh, yeah i loved you it when have... i did it yeah you got any friends that are still in the job that you know of? And yeah, quite a few, yeah, quite a few. Yeah, quite a few. Keeping in contact with them. That was when I was in Lancaster, so I keep in contact with my friends and family because quite a few of them are still in that area. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, 
especially uh, you know the health workers they're, they're doing a marvelous job really i mean i don't think we can thank them enough in terms of you know going through all this i mean the nhs has had so much positivity out of it in terms of promotion promotion and what job these people do mm. you know mm. got so much stick over the years hasn't it i mean if this doesn't help i don't know what will <laughs> yeah certainly opened a few more eyes i'm sure uh Absolutely. to those that sort of just carry on in life and just it's just there all the time and we probably some of us may take it for granted but uh, yeah i think you're right hopefully so you you mentioned you've been playing for a number of years there was a there was a dart show back in the 80s i think or early 90s called bullseye now <laughs> apparently I don't, i'm sure there's some footage out there on youtube or something but you actually went on but did you go on as a guest or like the player because they was a contestant first a contestant right yeah, was a contestant first did and you we win? won the Won, well, we won the show, but we didn't gamble because we won quite a lot of money and a lot of prizes. And before you say, did you bottle it? I, I was 50-50 and my partner just went, no, I'm not doing it. I said, why? He says, because I'm cacking myself. <laughs> how, long do they, how long do they actually give you to make your mind up? Is it to the board revolves or do they give yeah, you one afternoon? No, that's it. You've got to decide there and then. Uh, so we didn't do it and then then obviously uh, I started playing darts and getting a bit of a name for myself and the following year or maybe two years I was actually on doing the bronze bully and ended up doing about seven I think and the strange thing with the bronze bully is that uh, my wife has taped them all and when we have friends around we're having drinks she always puts them on <laughs> and she drives me nuts because I'm there with my little white socks on thinking I'm cool and they just they just rip into me all night. <laughs> I knew Jim quite well actually. I knew Jim quite well because he lived in the Lancaster area. Right. Okay. And I knew him quite well, and I was I was really privileged to uh, do a, a radio um, talk about him after he passed away, and we had a good hour on the radio and stuff like that. So it was really good to pass on sort of memories and yeah. stories and stuff that we'd done. That was good. Can you Still remember popular that? now? Even, yeah. Sorry, mate. Sorry. What 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 year was that? How long ago was that? Oh, seventeen. Oh, I'm trying to think. Eighty nine, I think. Wow. Eighty nine, somewhere around there. You ain't changed a bit. I know. Still my hunky self. All those Wigan pies, mate. Right. Hey, I tell you what. Me and you with them Wigan pies, Darren. I mean, I haven't had one for six months. <laughs> yes, we're looking trim. I've lost uh, two and a half stone since January. Anyway, um, moving on. Um, yeah, it's to see how much you've lost. <laughs> yeah, um, not gone well, to be fair. Not gone well. Move, move um, on. Yeah, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. So, um, you must be missing all the other sports and football and stuff, being a Man United fan, or oh, perhaps absolutely. not missing it. We were just getting into a roll. We were just, I mean, we were in oh, the quarter final roll. of the FA Cup. Quarter, yeah, quarter final of the FA Cup. Quarter final of the Europa League. Yeah. Um, challenging Chelsea and a few other teams, you know, for that sort of fourth spot in the Champions League. Uh, and then all this. Hand. I mean, it seems like there's going to be behind closed doors football at some point, maybe in a month or so. Yeah. It's going to be strange. I watched some of the, the uh, Bundesliga um, just to watch it, really. And it just doesn't, it's not the same at all, is it? No, it's I mean, a bit. It's dart, I mean, dart, darts and football, similar boxing even, it relies on crowds, doesn't it? Because it's part of the experience of being at the event. It's funny you should say that because obviously I've, I've been in an, around the game only for a short, you know, 10 years maybe, if that. And, and I remember the first time I ever went to a pro tour um, and I couldn't believe how quiet it was. And all you can hear is the darts going in the board, yeah. you know, and the occasional sort of clink of a whatever. Um, so that was that was strange, and obviously there is people there, um, but even just that was completed. So to do it in in football, where you can probably just hear the coach scream. I mean, they got the what's the language, didn't they? I know the Correct. coach is screaming, the players <laughs> screaming at each other. <laughs> because when you play darts, when I sort of when you uh, you know, a referee or what you know, you, people do get a little bit you know colourful, don't they? As they they're not playing very well, and I'm sure it's the same in the football. So what, they're going to have to watch the the microphone, surely. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, you can imagine the whoever's commentating on it running onto the pitch and telling the player, "Player, can you keep it down a bit? It's just not going to happen, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should, should get like um, I don't know, not a yellow card and a red card, but I'll have another card before the yellow with a warning for swearing or something because uh, yeah. they're bound to do it, aren't they? At some point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it echoes in, the, in some of these arenas, you know. Um, yeah. So talking of arenas, I mean, um, 
ITV, you do a lot of work there now for, for ITV and, and um, your yeah. pal Chris and whatever on, on, on TV. Um, I guess they're, you know, gagging to get back to, to broadcasting darts and stuff as well, aren't yeah. they? Any sport as well, all of them. Well, yeah, of course. Really, yeah, yeah. Just, isn't it? And you can imagine any sport on TV now that was going fully, everybody will, would watch it, wouldn't they? Because of, um, yeah. you know, that everybody's missed whatever sport they follow. Um, yeah, I absolutely love working for ITV. Um, obviously, we're unaware of how the season's going to progress in terms of TV events. Um, a little bit harder because of uh, the crowd participation and, and people that go to watch it. Uh, so obviously, I mean, we're still in May, just about. So you know, there's still quite a long way to go, and things are starting to change a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but it's all about getting to that first phase, and once you get to that first phase, in terms of you know a behind closed door event, for instance, you can then move on to the next phase and next phase, like football are doing. Yeah. Uh, it's all about progression and uh, just making sure all the protocols and everything's followed, and then we'll see. You know, so hopefully June and July we may see a little bit more movement. Um, we're almost into well, we're into summer then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, we, all these events that have been missed, you know, there's just no way on earth they can all be fitted in in three months and the end of the year. But the PDC are doing a marvelous job behind the scenes. A lot of people don't realise what goes on behind the scenes. That you know, all these things have been planned and then they go in the bin because things change. They do another plan, and that's just like a continuation that um, that's been happening since sort of March, April. Yeah, uh, and that will, will carry on, and and soon as we're ready to go, Barry Barry Hearn's philosophy is, you know, soon as we get the red light, we'll, we'll be, we need to be ready. Yeah, um, which which we will be. Yeah, I, I think that goes for probably every anybody in the in the sporting world getting ready for um, tournaments and galvanising your players, galvanising um, in our case certainly the families to sort of you know bring get the children to where they need to go and. Yeah. Hotels? Are we staying in those again? No. <laughs> it's just it's all a bit know, weird, isn't it? We just don't know. I mean, certainly for now, it's just about keeping you know keep yourself busy. Make sure you have something to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I follow obviously everything. People are following more things online now, certainly on social media as well, because of you know they're at home. Yeah. Um, talking about academies, you know, the academy I'm involved in, Blackburn, um, they did they did quite a few. They're very proficient on social media, and yeah. they did um, a flight competition where we had a few of us met, you know voted for the winner that was quite good to see the kids doing that and have you seen the, he's done some like um little gimmicky um oh, what's the word like a mascot with like a flight yeah. uh, <laughs> well that was quite funny some of them were brilliant uh, it was great to look at them obviously we had to pick a, pick winners but um it was really good to see that you know the, the kids were involved in so they were they were enjoying it as well yeah. so uh, yeah, that was good to do. Um, told them all to keep practicing as well while we're at home. Yeah. Good opportunity. Make sure that you're not just wasting this time because you can. You don't want to be uh, getting back to normality and looking back thinking, of, oh, if only I had done that. I had all that time. You know, now's the time. Yeah. Be, be, be positive with things. You know, get a plan. Things, things you want to do, get them done. Yeah, it's like giving yourself a service, you know, and, and getting ready so, for the for the for the. When I get to my age, you need services more often than not. <laughs> hey, it's supposed to be for under 18s as well. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, Alan, it's been lovely to talk to you, mate. Um, obviously, I haven't seen you for a while in the flesh, and I'm sure many others are looking forward to it. Can't wait till we can get back on TV, get those players playing, hear the, the crowds and the atmosphere again. Um, but most importantly, as you say, it's keeping yourself safe, isn't it? So. Absolute, absolute pleasure, Darren, as always. Be safe, everybody, and just enjoy this as much as you can, and we'll be back soon. Thanks, Alan. Take care. Cheers,